And now, here is Michael Ward with those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. You are now listening to the fastest show on IE Sports Radio. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr. Welcoming you to take another lap of the extra mile for today, July 30th, 2020. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am surprised we've actually gotten through as much racing as we have this season. Pretty much all of the seasons now reaching whatever their midpoint is right now. We got even some series getting ready to restart seasons that should have been finished. Looking at you, Formula E, and your six races in Berlin. And to help talk about all of that with me, my good friend and co-host, Michael Ward. Michael, how you doing? I'm doing really good today. How about you? I'm doing well. Let me turn you up. That was kind of low. And we will continue on with the program. Got a full slate of racing coverage to talk about this week as we've got some big topics to talk about over the next hour. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Before we want to do that, I just want to get a quick check in. Michael, how was your week? It was really good, really good. Can't complain. I've uh, I've been playing a lot of F1 2020 and just been watching the races as they come. I have also been on the F1 2020 train, as a lot of you, if you have my Steam account, you will have seen that it's pretty much the only game I play on Steam right now. Um, my quick one-minute review or less would be uh, just go out and get the game. It is awesome uh the my team mode has been eating up a lot of my downtime so it's been a lot of fun and i've got tantiana calderon as my second driver um uh, michael who are you using as your driver um i can't really pronounce this uh to his, his sec his first name but i can pronounce his second name his uh his name is uh nikita nikita russian driver Ah, yeah. I do not speak Russian, so I could not help you. I wanted all, but... I wanted uh Carrera, but uh I didn't have enough for him. If I want I wanted the Mercedes engine, but they the game was basically well, the money was basically just like you either have Carrera or you have the Mercedes engine. I chose the Mercedes engine. I actually went with the Renault engine and they got Tatiana Calderon and I've trained her up a little bit. Um she hasn't had the best finishes. Well, she's had the finishes that you would have for a first place team, and then I've kind of like dragged the car up because player, and I'm third in the championship. I definitely need to lift the difficulty next race or next season because I'm at the 90 difficulty now, and I'm still running up with the Mercedes and everything, but we will change that. But it's nice to actually have some good things in this year that is 2020 with everything that has gone on. And I bring up F1 2020 because we're going to start with Formula One and some news that broke earlier today that Sergio Perez, unfortunately, has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, Checo originally had an inconclusive test. The second test came back positive due to the quarantine procedures in Great Britain. He will miss the next two races at Silverstone. There was some talk about Esteban Gutierrez coming back into Formula One to replace him, but now the leader in the clubhouse in terms of replacing him looks to be Sergio, or not Sergio Perez, because that's the guy that's missing, but uh, Nico Hulkenberg is possibly going to make a return to the F1 grid. And as Michael and I were talking before the show began, and I'm going to bring it to you guys now, this next two weeks are going to be very important for one uh, Lance Stroll. Because whether or not he knows it, he apparently is racing for his job. And there is a lot of people that want him out instead of Sergio Perez when... 
Lance Stroll's runs in Formula One have been Williams, Williams, underperforming racing point. It's not like Stroll has been in a good car his entire career. The pink Mercedes he has now is the best car he's had in Formula One in his career, which has only been four years, and he just became the legal drinking age in America. (laughs) That being said, Michael, a lot of people think this is do or die for Stroll. What do you think? Do you think that he's got to prove something or he's out? Or do you think that this is just going to be a great way for him to stake his claim on the future of Racing Point going forward? I think this is do or die. Mm-hmm. Because because now that you know Perez is out of the way, he has to basically start pulling out massive massive racing uh race races after after this. He Aston Martin is going to be I think still are going to be purchasing uh Racing Point and you know when a new team arrives you know either one of the drivers can kicked out he's i don't think he's going to have his dad looking out for him anymore mm-hmm. i think he has i think he realizes that he has to go and he needs to start delivering these performances before uh Aston Martin replaces him with Vettel or whoever F2 driver <laughs> um, he needs to start getting podiums, and he's had some podiums with Williams. He's had some podiums. Yeah, that was a shock podium at uh, Canada. And before I continue, just want to say, what's up, Turin? What's up, Davidson Crooks? And what's up, Marcus Los Great? In the chat room, hanging out with us. If you want to get in with the conversation, jump into that chat room on Spreaker.com and join us with the conversation. I hear what you're saying, but here's how here's my retort. The guy bankrolling Racing Point is Lawrence Stroll. For those of you who don't know who that is, that is Lance Stroll's father. The I know, I know. And the only reason that the only reason that Racing Point is even bankrolled by Lawrence is that Lance is there. I don't see Lance or Lawrence doing what he did and bringing in Aston Martin just to say, okay, Lance, you're on your own at someplace else. Goodbye. You know, this isn't like Jordan Taylor and Ricky Taylor with Wayne Taylor racing and sports cars. And they finally got up and decided to go their separate ways, leaving Wayne Taylor with, you know, the empty nest that Wayne Taylor racing, which was originally started to get them those big factory drives. You know, this team was bought to make sure Lance has a team on, or make sure that he has a team on, um, to race for in formula one or a seat on the F one grid rather. So I don't see him leaving, um, at all. I don't see Lance getting removed from that seat. I mean, I agree with you. It's just, I was thinking, you know, the Austin Martin thing is a complete buyout. Like, you know, everybody, he, they buy out the entire team. But if, if Lawrence Stroll, you know, yeah, he's his father. Um, and a quote by the race on YouTube on a quote by Sergio Perez himself, if I was a father, I wouldn't want to kick my kid out either. There comes a line, and he's at this line. F1 is a very, very difficult place. You either perform, or you don't, or you gotta go. You either have a lot of money, which he does, that's how he's been staying on the grid, or you're really fast. This is honestly his do or die time. If he if he wants to, if he wants to, this 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 is the crazy thing about it, Daryl. If he wants to do well, he can do well. If he doesn't want to do well, he doesn't have to. But my 
my biggest problem is you have a car that if something happened to either of the two Mercedes, either a bad strategy call, you know, rain, gearbox failure, engine failure, whatever failure you can think of. A meteor hitting the track, which is what they're going to need to knock those cars out. Continue. <laughs> <clears throat> Happens to the Mercedes. They're the next best team to win. Ferrari, they are struggling this season. Putting it lightly and, or lightly. Or lightly. <laughs> Red Bull, only one driver can really touch you. And the rest of the grid, Renault, uh, McLaren, they're the next best thing that can hurt you, but uh, the grid is kind of disarray because of all this, and you can technically take advantage of this if you want to. That's the crazy thing about it, Daryl. I think if this Lance... guy wants to, he could take advantage, but if he doesn't, he doesn't have to. Especially I think Lance wants dad. to. I think he is tired of seeing his name getting dragged through the mud ever since this, you know, the rumor <laughs> of... Vettel coming there has come up, um, and there's something very telling. In an interview, when they were talking about the teammate, Lance said that he didn't really care who was going to be his teammate next year. He didn't say where he was going to be. He said, I don't really care who my teammate is going to be next year, which tells me that they've already had the conversation, and it's already known that Lance is staying right where he is, no matter what anybody wants to say about it. That's a telling, that's definitely a telling uh, response there. He doesn't care who his teammate is. And that does sound like uh, that the decision has already been made, but I'm, I, I, I don't know where it is. If, if, you know, if he doesn't really care, then yeah, continue hanging back there, but this is his time to shine. This is his time to carry on the team. And if he doesn't carry on the team, Daryl, during these next two weeks, you know, you're going to have McLaren try to challenge. I think the biggest problem is he cannot get shown up by whoever gets put in that car. And that's a problem. If he is, especially if you have Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah, if it's Nico Hulkenberg that comes back and waxes him the next couple of weeks, that's going to be a problem for Stroll. Right. His dad might think, huh, maybe my son isn't that good and start to look at going in a different direction. So there's a lot that is going into the next couple of weeks, but I think it sends a shock through the the garage that this can happen to any driver. And oh, definitely. I'm talking about the two at the top, Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Botas. If they are not careful and they get dinged on a positive test, that could be a championship gone because the other one's just going to run away if one of them are there. If it's, a horror, if it's a horror show and both of them get dinged, it's oh, a, man. It's game crazy. back on in the Formula One World Championship at that point. But it really sends the message that this could be anybody. We could very well have woken up this morning and not had Lewis Hamilton for the British Grand Prix. Who knows what that would have been for the championship. So what it says is, despite everything that they're doing with the COVID-19 procedures, this virus is still real. You cannot outman a virus can't out America a virus either. You know exactly who you're, who I'm talking to. If you're listening, say it louder for the people in the back, please. All right. You might be tired of this uh, virus. You might want your favorite sport back. Guess what? The virus ain't tired of you. So you can act all high and mighty. You can act like you can live with no fear. Guess what? Fear ain't gonna matter when you sit when you sucking on that intubator because you decide to go out. That's all I'm gonna say about that. And you know exactly who I'm talking to. Get mad if you want to. You know how to DM me. And with that being said, we're going to take a quick break before I go 
anywhere else with that. We're going to get into, we're actually going to come back, talk a little bit more about uh, Formula One, and we're also going to get into NASCAR. They got a brand new course coming up with a brand new chicane, and that is causing some consternation in the NASCAR community. We'll talk about that on the other side of this break here on the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Faces Loaded is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done. sports fans you're looking for a different type of sports talk show something you haven't heard before you gotta check out the bs3 sports show every other saturday on two live steve's radio 1 p.m central time 2 p.m eastern sports talk at its finest always have great guests playing some good hip-hop you don't want to miss it make sure to tune in to the bs3 sports show Every other Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. We are back here on the Extra Mile on I Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Daryl and Michael with you this evening. And want to give a shout out to Caitlin Seam, who's up. Yeah, she's getting things uh, squared away in Michigan. She's may actually be leaving Michigan to go somewhere else. Um, basically, Caitlin uprooted from North Carolina, went back home. Uh, she's looking to get things situated in a new place up in Michigan or Illinois, wherever she decides to stay. So there's a lot of moving pieces with that. She's going to take care of that, and then she'll be back with her show, Not What It Seems, and of course, sitting with me with all her wonderful Caitlinisms on the Extra Mile, which I am kind of starting to miss, and I hope we get to get those back soon. So I just want to give a quick shout-out to Caitlin and say, can't wait to... Get you back, and I hope you're having a lot of fun up there in Michigan. Stay safe, girl, and we will talk to you soon. With that being said, let's get back into things. So we've got the British GP coming up. I just wanted to put a bow on the F1 conversation and just uh, wrap it up with this. Michael, how do you think that second driver at Racing Point is going to do, and what would you expect of that person? Because... In all likelihood, it's going to be a driver that has not driven an F1 car in quite a while. Well, Daryl, I think what's going to happen, if it's Hulkenberg, I think he's going to stake his claim on why he needs to be back. I think he's going to go, I think he's going to smack stroll around, and he's going to really cement why he belongs back in F1. If it's a driver like uh, even even Gutierrez, Gutierrez might even even though I highly doubt, because in my opinion Gutierrez isn't that that good. But even he might say, well, this is the second Mercedes team that's kind of the second place, second fastest car on the grid right now. Even he might say, you know, I think it might be time to say, hey, let's go back to Formula One. I think I think these drivers are going to think this is my time to shine in Formula 1. This is my time to make some big moves. So they're going to be going into the race with some heated passion and whoever it is, I I want to I hope they're going to deliver some big overtakes on the grid tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but you know, when the British Drink Grand Prix happens. Yeah, on because Sunday. They're going to and... they're going to be looking to stake a claim. Yeah, I want to say that that driver is, yeah, they're basically driving for a job because we know how silly season is with Formula One. This could be a huge audition 
for that person. So I expect them to be aggressive, and I expect Lance Stroll to have to pick up his driving to compensate because that person's going to be driving for that seat, and he could end up with Lance's seat if Lance doesn't show the proper speed that he needs to of an F1 driver. So we'll close the book on that. Head over to NASCAR, and they're heading to New Hampshire this weekend where the Cup Series will be running the only race on Sunday. But in a couple of weeks, NASCAR will be descending upon the Daytona International Speedway for the first of two races in August, but one of them is going to be on the road course. And with that road course, as we know, coming out of NASCAR Turn 4, there is that long run into the modified Turn 1, which is a tight, narrow left-hander onto the International Horseshoe Complex that makes up the infield section of the road course. NASCAR has decided to add a chicane to the Daytona road course outside of what we will call here the traditional turn four, the oval turn four, to bring down the speeds going into that braking zone. Because as we know, NASCAR does not use carbon uh, brakes. They use steel brakes. That's going to be a tough ask of those brakes to come from 200 miles per hour to 60 going into that turn. So they've added this chicane. However, there is still no practice for the event. So the drivers will get their first look at the chicane during the pace laps and their first way to try and negotiate it with other cars will be in anger during the first lap of the race. So I want to start with this to Michael. What do you think of this plan for NASCAR saying we're just not going to do practice for this event at a racetrack that no one has run at in these cars and in some cases trucks before? Turn one is going to be fine. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) There's enough said. Turn one is going to be fine. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be... An interesting first few laps of that race on uh, in August when they come to this racetrack. And I, I don't understand why they've decided not to do practice, Michael, when they've already put down the they've already put down the precedent that at a track that they've not raced at, they've had practice. The Xfinity series had two one hour practices at the Indianapolis Road Course before they had their race earlier in July, or earlier this month, rather. Yet, everybody's coming to the Daytona Road Course, a race that attracted stock cars have quite literally never run on before, and NASCAR's question, or NASCAR's response is, eh, y'all be all right, go on out there, y'all be fine. Like, I, I don't get it, I really don't. Um, I think I don't, I don't really, I can't really justify that decision, <clears throat> mostly because they need practice because practice tells them what grooves to run, what lines to run, uh, how does the track react to this? How does the car react to that? You know, what the track reacts to in this condition versus that condition versus what setups can complement this uh, condition of the track. There's a lot of reasons why practice is needed. And you take that away and the drivers are just going in blind. And is that what they want? Daryl, is that what they want? Is that what... It, just to have their drivers going blind, not knowing what the hell to do, and there's driving in and well, here's a whole how, bunch of craziness happened. Here's I, how I, I've seen it explained. And sorry to cut you off. But here's <laughs> how I've seen it explained. A lot of the drive or NASCAR has basically said that they like the racing without the practice because it's made a little bit more unpredictable with the random draw for qualifying and then the practice session where no one gets or we don't have practice. However, that's great for tracks where they already have a notebook and they just take a guess at how the track's going to handle that day. Nobody's got a notebook for this. And somebody made mention of they can look at the IMSA data and see how they did it. Great. How does that translate to a stock car that doesn't have 
carbon brakes that doesn't use a turbocharged engine that is about a thousand pounds heavier than that car and has a much smaller wing than the almighty wing on the back of a GT Daytona car. Like the only similarity is they have engines in the front and four tires. Most of them or most of them have the engines in the front. Like that data really is not going to help them at all when they get to the road course. It's not. And they're, I think they're going to need practice because like, like, well, like you said, all those reasons, they don't know how the car is going to react to this new track, and you're going to go in there, they're going to go in there, and they're going to have crazy readings, they're not going to know what to do. Oh, wait, we're racing. We're going to have to figure this out on the go. You know what I mean? Like, they, I, I think they should have had it practice for this race. I do too. Um, what I will say is that stage one is going to be interesting. You do not want to miss it. And there are going to be some wholesale changes when they have the competition caution during these races to pit and check out what the tire well where will be. I expect crew members under, over, probably inside the car making adjustments uh, during that first stop. But there is one positive to this race. General Tire and Goodyear are bringing rain tires for the event. And Michael, we're probably going to finally get to see stock cars on rain tires. Because it's Florida in the summer, and it always rains in the afternoon. All these races are going to be in the afternoon, which means rain, which means rain tires. Are you excited to finally see some NASCAR um, cut cars on the rain tires? I'm excited, but I'm also terrified. (laughs) <laughs> I'm terrified because they haven't had any practice and they're using rain tires. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited because it's NASCAR in the rain. And how often do you see that? We haven't seen it in a while. I think the last time we saw it was like, I'm probably going to get this date wrong, like 2014 in mid Ohio when the race was basically steady rain the entire day and they were slip sliding around uh cars were sliding off the track it was difficult but it was exciting because it was something we never really got to see the f1 or not the f1 the nascar cup cars do before they are the xfinity series cars i'm sorry it was xfinity series cars that were running at this time. We got to see the Xfinity Series cars on rain tires. And it was exciting because we got to see the drivers challenged in a way they haven't been challenged before. And they're going to be challenged to the utmost extreme attacking Daytona International Speedway on rain tires in Florida rain, which is not light in the slightest during the summer. Exactly, and it's going to be fun to watch, but terrifying to watch, too, because, like you said, like I keep saying, no practice. Mm-hmm. And like I, and again, turn one is going to be fun. Cannot wait to see how turn one goes. And for this week, they're heading out to New Hampshire for racing for just the Cup Series. The Xfinity Series and Truck Series teams are going to be on an extended break. They won't be back until August. And as we go into this week's race, let me see where it is again, the Foxwoods Resort Casino 301, there are several drivers on the standings page that really got to get things going if they want to be a part of the playoff picture. And the first name on that list, Michael, is Jimmy Johnson. This is a guy that has won seven championships. He won five in a row. He knows how to get it done in this uh, playoff format. He's currently 19th in the playoff standings on the outside looking in. He is 18 points from safety. And usually, you know, this was any other year, but now we'd say that This would be the time he would start to pick it up. Um, Jimmy has struggled through the summer mightily. You know, he hasn't had the racing luck. He hasn't had the pace. So as we're sitting here, 
he is on the precipice of going into his final season and not having a say so into how the playoffs will operate. Did you see that coming at the start of the season? I did because because uh, his performances at like the end of last year weren't you know all that, and they've only gotten not worse, but they haven't gotten substantial this year. Sure, he's been putting up the races where he's been, you know, he's been there trying to contend for the win, but he's always been taken out. And I think, um, I think this year he's just gonna continue to be like up there, but he's not gonna be contending for wins, sadly, because either he gets on, he gets a win, he gets up there, either he gets up there or he gets taken out by something. But I think he has a good chance this weekend because of the unpredictability of the race. <clears throat> so I I think this I think this weekend is a pretty good chance for him. I would come on and say that I was surprised, but I wasn't. I said at the beginning of the season he wasn't gonna make the playoffs. So I'm not surprised <laughs> that this is happening to him. It's just sad to see that this is how his first ballot Hall of Fame career is going to end without a playoff berth. Now I'm going to eat the biggest load of crow when he wins this weekend, when and if, but we will see. It's just, I'm surprised that Johnson is not fair too well. On the other side of things, Bubba Wallace, who is right behind him in the standings where he is 20th, in the playoff seeding, they seed one through 30. The top 16 are the only ones that go into the actual playoff format. Bubba has actually had an uptick in performance this year compared to the last couple of years at Richard Petty Motorsports, which we know is not the most highly funded team. We'll say that, but he's going to be racing with a heavy heart as they lost Maurice Petty over there at Richard Petty Motorsports. So that team's going to want to come out and do well by him. That is a driver I'm looking at that has a fringe chance at really working his way up into the playoffs if he can get back in that top 15, top 10 run that he was going on through the spring and early portion of the summer. I think he's got a good chance, especially this weekend. Again, due to the unpredictability of it. Or mm. he, I think he can get on, get in just by points alone because... He has been really consistent, Daryl, and I think consistency in this championship is what's going to be key. Well, if he's going to get in by points, he's going to have to start working hard on that as he's currently 100 points out. So he's going to start going on a run. I think he can get on that run. It's just needs a little bit of a push in the good direction. They've got Cash App back on the car this week, so that should give them some boost as they're starting to finally see some sponsor money roll in as Bubba has really stepped out there as a leader on and off the track, obviously, with how things have been going on the last few months. But let's go into the playoffs now. i got a couple of minutes before we take a break, and we'll go to that guy, the second driver. Actually, not the second driver. He's 12th in the standings right now. Does not have a win. Surprised to see him down here this far, this late into the season, that is the defending champion, Kyle Busch. Michael, does he get this turned around, or is Kyle destined for a round one exit at this point? Because he has shown none of the speed that we're used to seeing with only one stage win on the season. It is so strange to see Kyle Busch down there. You would expect he'd be up there fighting for the win or fighting for the overall lead. No, this man is down here in... What, what, what place is that, Daryl? 12th. 12th place. He is down here in 12th. I don't really know what's going on with him, Daryl. This performance is surprising to me. I, I honestly expected him to be down there. I don't expect him to be down there not scoring points. Points. Or not scoring wins. It's just... It's baffling. It's really baffling. Yeah, we would excuse me. We would expect him to be up there with Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Brian Keselowski, you know, battling it out for those top four positions, and yet he's languishing down here on twelfth. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, they go win for win right now. 
Hamlin has five wins, but he would be second because right now Kevin Harvick is leading the regular season points championship, and the winner of that championship gets 16 extra bonus points, of course. But they would be extremely close when the playoffs started with just two points separating Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Those two have been going back and forth all season long, matching each other step for step. And I imagine that to continue on for the rest of the season. But we're going to take a break, shift gears to the IndyCar segment as we get ready to wrap up this episode of the Extra Mile for this evening. And that championship has been seen double for most of this year. I'll explain that on the other side of this break here on the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Hi, I'm Brian McLaughlin. In the National Football League, there are approximately 17 million total fans. I'm Andrew Guzman. My Dallas Cowboys make up almost 9 million of those fans. And my Seahawks have a very loyal fan base of around 4 million. That's more than three quarters of all the fans. That's absolutely correct, Andrew. And on the Common Ground Football Podcast, we'll be talking about the good, bad, and ugly of these teams. We'll have weekly picks, discuss transactions, injuries. And we'll chat about the rest of the league, too. Blake freaking Bortles? Oh, yes. And Captain Andrew Luck. Excellent. What about Fitzmagic? Oh, let's not get carried away now. Oh, all right, then. Join us each week at CommonGroundFootballPodcast.com or wherever you get your podcast. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy crisp. White tea. <laughs> we are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. You can catch that show Mondays here on IE Sports Radio. Remember, if you miss any episode of any IE Sports Radio show, check out the Springer Show Real SoundCloud and other places where podcasts can be heard. We're back here on the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio. Daryl and Michael with you as we roll into this final segment of the evening where we're going to talk IndyCar and we're going to talk double headers as IndyCar has seen a lot of them with several tracks, including Portland either having races indefinitely postponed or canceled outright due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, because unfortunately it is still here. IndyCars had to struggle to put together the rest of their schedule. And what Roger Penske has come up with 
is got the series seeing double a lot. The vast majority of the races coming up for the second half of the season leading into the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg will be double header events with the Honda Indy 200 uh, next week, which will be August 8th and August 9th. That race will be a double header now. The Indy 500 will be, of course, its own singular event. They'll then go to two races for the Bomberito Automotive Group race at Worldwide Technology Speedway, which is Gateway. And then the IndyCar Harvest GP, we're going back to Indy for yet another set of races, October 2nd and October 3rd, before finally going to the Firestone GP of St. Petersburg on October 25th. Michael, th- this pandemic has presented a lot of complexity for schedule makers in the automotive world. And it looks like the double header has been received well by fans, been received well by drivers. Looks like it's been working out pretty well for IndyCar to the point where that's pretty much what their season's going to be going into the end of it. Just one long string of double headers. Uh, I think it sounds great. Definitely promotes more racing, and if the drivers are, if the drivers are looking forward to it, then I'm looking forward to it. And if the teams are looking forward to it, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think, I think uh, it's gonna look really good, and definitely gonna promote a lot more IndyCar racing. And you know, after the COVID red flag, we are starved for racing. So yeah, we are. I am looking forward to it if that's the case. And as we've seen the, as we've seen these double headers, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not these will continue into next season. I would actually like to see some of these races stay as double headers permanently, if IndyCar is really unwilling to expand the season into football season, which is something they just refuse to do. And the only reason they're doing it right now is due to the pandemic. I think this is a good compromise where you get more races, you get more bang for your ticket, where you get two races in one weekend, and it's a whole lot of fun to have these double headers and know you're going to see great racing all weekend long. So I think this is something that I would like to see IndyCar incorporate. They've already incorporated into the schedule somewhat. I would like to see this continue on a more permanent basis going forward where some of the tracks like Iowa or a uh, Road America stay as doubleheader events going forward. Um, I would like them to stay as doubleheader events. I just want more racing. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's what the racing fans in the world will say. We, We just want more racing and we'll take it. However, we can get it as long as it doesn't come with that ridiculous format. They tried the one year Texas was a doubleheader. I don't know if you remember that where they ran the first race and they came back and did a doubleheader for the second race, which was like an hour after the first race ran. Do you remember that? I remember that. That was, I don't want to say dumb, but it it wasn't, it was unsmart. Unsmart. It, it was not very good. That was actually back when Versus <laughs> was a thing. Anybody remember the Versus Network? Just me? No, oh, no, I remember it too. Yeah, and you know, that was some wild days for IndyCar, but we've learned from there. They've actually got the new format where they actually run qualifying, and the first lap sets their uh, place for the first race. The second lap sets their place for the second race race which I think is interesting Hmm. it really helps you know make uh, qualifying more interesting doing it that way and as we look at the standings for IndyCar going forward Michael the question is who can stop Scott Dixon as he won the first three races of the season um Kind of struggled at the second race at Road America. Really had some bounce back races at Iowa. Now we come to a racetrack that he's really good at, been Ohio. This is a place where if you're challenging him for the championship, you're going to need to get on top of him quick, fast, in a hurry because he's starting to pull away a lead here. 
Yeah, somebody's going to have to stop him, and I don't know who that person could be. I think uh, Scott Dixon has been on a roll so far, and uh, the roll is going to even just continue after this race. I think he's got a good chance of winning uh, this race coming up. And one of the drivers that everyone's looking at as a surprise with the Aero McLaren Schmidt Peterson team, Pato Award, currently fourth in the championship right now, has that one pole with 162 points. He has really come on strong with that team as that effort has come out swinging and both their young drivers at some point have shown that they have speed to compete. I think they've got to be happy over there, don't they? Don't you think? I think they got to be happy. I'm think I think they're happy as well, Daryl. To be sitting fourth in the championship, this is a really good for them. Oliver, yeah, Oliver Askew sitting twelfth. That is a driver that has run a lot better than his stats do show. Then the point standings will show. And on the other side, of course, you got drivers that aren't doing as well. And I have to scroll all the way down to find Alexander Rossi in tenth. Boy, it feels like he's on the Jimmy Johnson fast track where everything that has gone wrong to start his season has gone wrong. And Ross is currently sitting 10th with 118 points. We thought he'd be a championship contender. I thought he was going to be a championship contender. But Michael, he is nowhere close right now. Yeah, uh, I think I think the COVID red flag just basically got everybody out of a groove and so certain drivers are sure are struggling that you wouldn't think so but um the season is still somewhat young he had definitely has time to pull it back back it's just he has to figure out his own way of pulling it back soon sooner hopefully than later because the way dixon is looking he's not going to stop rolling anytime soon no, he's not. You know, the schedule is going to be much shorter than what we've had in recent years as we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, currently 14 races on the schedule. There's a big open spot where September is. There might be one or two races placed in there, but the way it's sitting, they do not have a lot of races to get things done as the season is already half over going into the Honda Indy 200 next week. So if Ross is going to make a championship uh, charge, he needs to start doing that right now, or he's going to be in trouble uh, of mounting any sort of a solid finish to the season. But on the other side, there is a bright spot, of course, in that in that Andretti Autosport team. That, of course, is Colton Herta. He's run strong. He is currently in seventh. Michael, the future of Andretti Autosport does look really, really uh, good for them. I agree, Daryl. It looks really good for them, and I think they're going to still be championship contenders uh, even after uh, those dri- the, the current drivers leave. And we will see what happens, but it is about time to go on and get out of here. But before that, we got to make some picks for nearest the win. Only two races this weekend, that is IndyCar and and NASCAR. For NASCAR, you know what? I'm going to take a shot in the dark. I think Kyle Busch gets better. And I think Kyle Busch wins this week at, Mich- at uh, I was about to say Michigan, at New Hampshire. Sorry for jinxing Kyle Busch already. And for Formula One, I mean, Lewis Hamilton. I mean, there, there's no other reason to say that. You know, just Lewis is going to win this Sunday. Uh, Michael, who you got? Um, for me, I'm gonna go with Jimmy Johnson. I think a wise, skilled driver is gonna triumph under the chaos, and I think he's gonna race his way in for this final year in the uh, NASCAR Cup Series. As for uh, Formula One, I picked Hamilton last week. I'm going to actually go with Valtteri Bottas. I think Bodas will get the uh, the jump on Hamilton and uh, defeat the Brit at his home track. Of course, I don't actually believe this, but you know, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go in here believing that. Well, we will see what happens, but we're gonna roll out for this week. Remember, check out WG or sorry, <clears throat> check out IE Sports Radio on Twitter. 
Facebook and Instagram. Check out the website as well. Check out Michael's Twitter, Stargazer underscore FX. I'm at DK Junior 12. If you want to get in touch with us during the week. And if you love this racing coverage that you're getting here, where you're going to want to stick around and head over to WBGR Sports on Tuesdays, WBGR Sports on Facebook, for 2 Wide Tuesday, hosted by this guy, Daryl Kinsey Jr., every Tuesday at 2 p.m., giving you what you love, which is more great sport or motor sports content. Check that out. You get to actually see my face on that show. And, of course, remember to continue to listen here to the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio on Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on IE Sports Radio. With that being said, for Michael, I'm Daryl. This has been the Extra Mile, and we will see you at the next green flag. Good night, everybody.